Jeff Flake of Arizona, who was on hand for the annual Pig Book event in Washington today that highlights all that wasteful federal spending. Congressman, good to have you. Thanks for having me. Well, you guys and your colleagues are going to be calling the shots, uh, I guess, on a lot of financial matters, on a lot of these spending matters. But you found that on the spending matters, nothing's much changed, has it? <laughs> not, not too much. We, uh, uh, the pig book was announced today. Uh, Citizens Against Government Waste does this every year. They found that uh, for fiscal year 10, there were uh, more than 9,000 earmarks worth uh, nearly $17 billion. So not much has changed. That's only down about 10 percent from last year. But, you know, we just talk about the earmark stuff, the little goody stuff that is snuck in there. And we right. have some good examples as we rifle through this. But the fact of the matter is that it leaves out the huge omnibus programs um, who, whose veracity and, and accountability is still very much in doubt. Why does this keep happening, Congressman? Why, why when, when, when people complain about earmarks, do we still see them? When they complain about excessive spending, we see only more spending. Why? Well, I think, I hope that changes this year uh, with the elections, but it has been the case that members think it's their responsibility to bring home the bacon. And uh, although earmarks only represent about 1% of the federal budget, uh, they justify or they, they stimulate higher spending everywhere else. Once you get an earmark in a bill, you're usually obligated to support that bill no matter how large it becomes. And earmarks are used to grease the skids for unrelated legislation as well. So it's just been part and parcel of a, a big explosion under Republicans and Democrats that just hasn't abated. I'm wondering, too, as we look at this financial overhaul, I mean, you, you, you have a history of being leery of the government right. encroaching too much. And obviously something needs to be done with our financial institutions uh, to prevent another 2008-type collapse. But do you right. find it the least bit odd that the folks calling the shots are themselves running books that are shot? <laughs> you bet. And, and uh, to, to say that this bill is going to end all bailouts when this bill basically creates a permanent bailout fund, uh, you're guaranteeing, you're assuming that you're going to be bailing out industries uh, you know, from here forward. And uh, you, you're still going to have not just an implicit but an explicit guarantee now that if you get too big or if you run afoul of, of the market somehow, you're going to be bailed out by government. And that's the wrong approach. But I don't see anything changing in that regard. I mean, um you know, we bailed out so many, as I said, Congressman, we've right. moved from, you know, too big to fail to too many to forget. And, and right. I don't, I, what is the happy medium? Well, uh, the happy medium is to, to have a regulatory environment uh, where businesses that take risk actually assume those risks and not assume that they can simply fall back on the taxpayer. Uh, unfortunately, well, does there's that nothing mean, in this no, legislation sorry, Congressman, that actually Does that happens. mean that you would support if a major money center bank was under significant duress of its own accord. Yes. In other words, it took on whatever you guys are ultimately going to call unacceptable risk. Let her rip. Let her go. Yes, yes. I, I think we'd been better off had we not had the bailout. Because um, you know, the proponents of the bailouts, like uh, sorry to interrupt you again, but proponents of the bailouts right. have said, well, the proof in the pudding is that we're getting back a lot of the pudding. A lot of the money that we lent is coming back. And the cost that is not nearly as onerous as we as we fear. What do you say? Well, uh, that just assumes uh, assume that things wouldn't have come back anyway. And uh, in fact, uh, there's some some I think decent evidence to support that this has actually prolonged the crisis, at least in the housing market, certainly. Um, so I, I think that we could have done some things. Maybe it would have put. Uh, a little more exposure on the taxpayer, re increasing uh, FDIC limits and whatnot, but uh, the bailout, I, I don't think that we had to do. Um, real quickly, when I look at the market up another 100 points today, we're comfortably over 11,000. Um, the, the context that I have at the White House, so they include the gardener and the chef. They're telling me, Congressman, proof that this spending, this approach, earmarks and all, is working like a charm. What say you? Well, I don't think so. I, I think we, we still have a rough patch to go through. Commercial real estate, I think the other shoe still has to fall there. Uh, the stock market isn't the entire economy, obviously. I, I hope that things are turning around. I truly do. But uh, we have a long way to go. And the problem is, as you pointed out, as long as we have a regulatory environment uh, here that, that, that assumes that, uh, hey, if you... If you're going to fail, we're going to prop you up. Uh, we're just not going to get uh, get very far ahead of this problem. I don't know, Congressman. I got me through college with my dad, but who knows? We'll see. Very good having you, sir. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having me. Well, well the White House is usually.